You don't believe what the word of God say? Get all your wives and guarantee you'll be surrounded in hell, in hell. with hips. <laughs> That's right. Get all your wives and I guarantee you'll be surrounded in hell with hips. Oh, really? You can guarantee this. Okay, great, Gino. Let's take a look at what the word says. All right, guys, so we're going to take another look at some more of this clip from Gino, and we're going to attack it from a slightly different direction, uh, and I'm going to demonstrate that Gino is wrong. I'm going to demonstrate that the Word of God reigns supreme on this issue, and Gino is wrong. So let's take a look at this. Um, what we're going to do, I want to go back and play a little bit of an earlier clip. We're going to look at it. Uh, but the point that he just made is that if you've got more than one wife, you'll be surrounded in hell with hips. You don't believe what the word of God say? Get all your wives and guarantee you'll be surrounded in hell, in hell. with hips. <laughs> That's right. All right, guys. So Gino just said, if you've got more than one wife, you'll be surrounded in hell with hips. But is this true? Let's take a look at another quick clip that he's got here, and then what we're going to do is we're going to address this. We will disassemble this. We are going, I'm going to demonstrate from the Word that Gino is wrong. I'm going to demonstrate from the Word, the Bible, that Gino is teaching falsehood on this issue. So they got over social media, let's tell me, Pastor Dennis, was David wrong? Was Solomon wrong? Well, they, they even went as far as justifying concubines. My Lord. These are church people. Sure. So called. Yeah. Was well, Abraham wrong when he had uh, Hagar? Oh, All that was allowed back then. Back then. All that was allowed back then, but the boss came on the scene now. That's right. And Jesus Christ is the boss, buddy. That's right. Huh? And Jesus is. Jesus is greater than Moses, greater than Abraham, greater than Isaac, greater than Enoch, greater than Solomon. That's right. Greater than they all. That's right. That's right. Jesus was greater than them all. So let's see what Jesus has to say here, okay? Um, first off, I want to take you to a, let's uh, downsize this and take you to a passage of scripture here. This is Jesus speaking. Revelation chapter 22, verses 12 through 16. And it says here, this is Jesus speaking. He says, Behold, I am coming quickly and my reward is with me to render to every man according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the Aleph and the Tav, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter by the city gates. A good one to, uh, to compare this to if you go to the KJ. Uh, it says, blessed are those who um, do the commandments so that they may have right to the tree of life. But that's, we don't want to get hung up here. We want to keep moving. All right, so this is comparison of those who are in the kingdom and those who are not in the kingdom. Those who are in the city, those who are not in the city. He says, outside are the dogs and the sorcerers and the immoral persons and the murderers and the idolaters and everyone who loves and practices lying. I, Jesus, Yeshua, have sent my angel to testify to you these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. He says, immoral persons will not inherit the kingdom. Okay, so we have seen this. We know this is elsewhere in Scripture. Let's take a look at Revelation chapter 21, starting in verse 22. I saw no temple in it, for uh, the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb are its temple. And the city has no need of the sun or of the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God has illumined it, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. In the daytime, for there will be no night there, its gates will never close. 
and they will bring the glory and honor of nations. And listen, nothing unclean. And no one who practices abomination shall ever come into it, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. People who practice abomination, people who are unclean, immoral persons will not be in the kingdom. Okay, this is what the Word says. We go to 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 6, verse 9. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. So this is important. This is very important, okay? Anybody that's doing these things will not inherit the kingdom of God, okay? And I believe Pastor Jennings would agree with me on every single one of these verses that I just read because it's very clear. Immoral, fornicators, adulterers, um, those who practice abominations will not inherit the kingdom of God. So what does Jesus say? We're going to use Jesus' words here. Oh, look, it says in Matthew chapter 8, verse 11, I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out in the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Listen to me. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will be in the kingdom. But we just read that immoral persons, adulterers, idol or, or, or um, those who practice abomination, and those who are fornicators, those four things right there, Pastor Jennings has leveled all of those charges against people who have more than one wife. And yet, right here, Jesus says that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will be in the kingdom. And specifically, we know that Abraham and Jacob had at least, Abraham had at least three wives that we know of, but uh, Genesis chapter 25 verse 6 tells us that he had other concubines as well. My Lord, concubines. No, Abraham had concubines. He will be in the kingdom, okay? Um, Jacob had four wives, Leah, Rachel, Bilhah, and Zilpah, okay? Four wives. He will be in the kingdom. So we've got a problem here. Either Yeshua is lying when he says that immoral persons and fornicators and idolaters, uh, or not idol uh, adulterers, and those who commit abomination will not be in the kingdom, but he's saying that these will be in the kingdom, or having more than one wife is not fornication, idolatry, or, or adultery, um, abomination, or immoral in any way. Now, I know Jennings right here just had... Uh, so, so let's look at a couple, um, a couple confirmations of that right quick first, and then I'm going to take you to some other verses. Okay, so uh, Luke, then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence and you taught in our streets. And he will say, I tell you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evil doers. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets, including Moses, who had more than one wife. In the kingdom of God, but you yourselves being thrown out. They will come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and will recline in the kingdom of Elohim, of God. Okay? So, uh, that's at least two witnesses from the mouth of Jesus, that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will be in the kingdom. And we know that Abraham and Jacob at least had more than one wife. So, Jennings is wrong on this issue. Okay, now he will say, oh, that was then, this is now, and we're going to talk about that in just a second, okay? So you, you hold that thought. You just go ahead and hold that thought, because I'm telling you, we're going we're gonna to take that one apart too, okay? Another chapter, a whole chapter, Hebrews chapter 11. I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but I want you to recognize Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 11 is the chapter of the, the great men of faith. It lists a number of them, and it says, you know, we can't even name all of them in this chapter, but specifically it names Abraham and Jacob, 
okay? It specifically names, okay? We've got Abraham right here. See, Abraham, by faith. He's one of the great men of faith, okay? We have uh, um, listed in addition, we have uh, Isaac and Jacob, okay? Jacob listed as one of the great men of faith right here, okay? He's going to be in the kingdom, okay? We've got Moses listed. Moses had more than one wife. Uh, we're, we're told for, for certain on two, and there's strong evidence for a third one. If you go look up uh, Judges chapter 1 and chapter 4, it talks about uh, Hobab the Kenite, who was his father-in-law. Well, that's not Ruel the Midianite, and it's not or, or uh, Yitro. But by faith, Moses, more than one wife. He will be in the kingdom, okay, listed as one of the great men of faith. We come on down here, and we see right here, Gideon, more than one wife, great man of faith, will be in the kingdom. Uh, we have David right here, more than one wife, great man, who will be in the kingdom. There are many more who could be listed, but all of these, it says, are men approved by God approved by God, not approved by Pastor Jennings, okay, um, because he doesn't like what they did, but God had no problem with it, and they will be in the kingdom. Now, Pastor Jennings will tell us, he'll say, oh no, that was then, God allowed it back then, but Jesus came on the scene. Well, we know right here that Jesus just named men that have uh, had more than one wife and said they'll be in the kingdom, and Jesus himself said, immoral people uh, adulterers, um, fornicators, and uh, those who commit abominations will not be in the kingdom. So let's take a look at, at, at a few other things here that will disassemble Pastor Jennings in his statement. If we go to 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 29, it says, Also the glory of Israel, this is speaking of God, also, the glory of Israel will not lie or change his mind, for he is not a man that he should change his mind. Listen to me. God doesn't change. His standards of righteousness don't change. They're the same from age to age. We see that also in Malachi chapter 3, verses 6 and 7. For I, Yahweh, do not change. Therefore, you, O sons of Jacob, are not consumed. From the days of your fathers you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says Yahweh Tsevaot. Okay, um, he's speaking on a specific issue right here, but all of his statutes, all of his ordinances, every one of them are still valid today. They don't change, they don't go away. Okay. In fact, if you read Malachi, go a little farther in the book of Malachi right there, chapter 4, it says that in the last days, um, I will send you um, Elijah the prophet and uh, Moses. Uh, you know, we sing the song, these are the days of Elijah, uh, declaring the word of the Lord. These are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And if you look at that passage right there, it says that we will do even the ordinances and the statutes. What are the ordinances and the statutes that most of the church, including Gino's church, have forgotten or ignore or throw away or say, oh, all of that's been done away with? Well, let's keep going. We're going to look at some more right here. God doesn't change, and His Word doesn't change. And I'm going to prove more of that here in just a second. And I'm going to prove how Gino is sinning at least three different ways on this issue. Okay? Right here, Second Chronicles chapter 24, verse 1. Joash was seven years old when he became king, and he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Zibia uh, Zibi uh, from Beersheba. Joash did what was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of Jehoiada the priest. Jehoiada took two wives for him, and he became the father of sons and daughters. The Bible says, Gino, that Joash did what was right in the sight of the Lord. Now, does God change? Does he have a different standard of rightness and righteousness for that people and for that people over there? Does he change? No, he does not. His standards of righteousness have not, will not change. It says, Joash did what was right in the sight of the Lord 
all the days of Jehoiada the priest. Jehoiada took two wives for him, and he became the father of sons and daughters. So taking two wives right here was right in the sight of the Lord. It was right in the sight of the Lord. So you can't tell me that it was sin because it wasn't. And it wasn't something God simply allowed. It was something that was right in his sight. Because David, 1 Kings chapter 15, verse 5, because David did what was right in the sight of the Lord and had not turned aside from anything, anything. You see that word? How much? Anything that God commanded him all the days of his life, except in the case of Uriah the Hittite. One case, Uriah the Hittite. So what we understand, David, who is an author of Scripture, king of Israel, who uh, functioned in the order of Mel Melchizedek, Melchizedek, okay? Um, right here it says he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. It was right when he took Abigail. It was right when he took Ahinoam. It was right when he took Eglah. It was right when he took Hadith. It was right when he took Makkah. It was right when he took the ten concubines. The only thing that was wrong was when he took another man's wife, and that is the definition of adultery. Having more than one wife is not adultery. It's never adultery. There's nothing in Scripture that indicates that having more than one wife at the same time is adultery. What is adultery is taking someone else's woman. Go read Leviticus chapter 20, verse 10. If we continue on down, 1 Kings chapter 14, verse 8 tells us, um, God tore the kingdom away from the house of David and gave it to you. Yet you have not been like my servant David, who kept my commandments and followed me with all his heart to do only that which was right in my sight. Was David marrying more than one woman right in God's sight? We've got at least two witnesses right here in Scripture that indicate, yes, it was, right? There you go. All right, so what then is the problem here? We've got problems. Gino has problems. Gino's problem is, is that he thinks God has different standards for different people and different times and different places. Oh, God allowed it back then, but he doesn't allow that anymore. See, most of Christendom thinks that, but this is, what, this is part of what I would call Christendom, D-U-M-B. All you got to do is put your thinking cap on. But too many people are woo, starstruck by Gino and starstruck by all kinds of other stuff. Or they're wrapped up in their monogamy only false man-made doctrine and theology that comes straight out of Greco-Roman paganism. I can prove it. Okay, go read Greco-Roman law. That's where monogamy only comes from. It does not come from Scripture. The only thing God indicated in Genesis chapter 2.24 that Yeshua, Jesus, affirms in Mark 10 and Matthew 19 is that you cannot tear a marriage apart. You're not supposed to tear it apart. He said the only reason God allowed for it to be torn apart was hardness of heart. Okay? However, he did provide a way for that to be done rightly. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 24, 1 through 4. Not a good thing. I don't encourage, do not endorse divorce, but sometimes it just happens. God himself is divorced. Go read uh, Jeremiah chapter 3, verses 6 through 12. God is a divorcee. Okay, so what is it that Gino is doing wrong? Uh, according to this, it says you shall have just weights. Or, or just balances, just weights, a just ephah, and a just hen. I am Yahweh, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, okay, out of the land of Egypt. Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 13, you shall not have a bag, uh, in your bag, differing weights, a large and a small. This is where you would tip the scales in order to um, make more profit on something by using weights that aren't true weights. A just balance and a scale belong to Yahweh. All the weights in the bag are his concern. He gets he 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 doubles down. He says differing weights and differing measures, both of them are abominable to Yahweh. Differing weights are an abomination to Yahweh, and a false scale is not good. Proverbs twenty verses ten and 
23. Listen to me. Gino is wrong. He's teaching an abomination when he teaches that God has different weights and measures for different people. God allowed it back then, but he doesn't allow it now, right? Or if he believes, if Gino truly believes that Jesus and God are one, then he should truly believe that Jesus is teaching exactly the same thing that God teaches in the uh, in the Tanakh, in the Torah, in the Old Testament. Because Jesus says, my doctrine is not mine, but his who sent me. Jesus only taught that which was written in the Torah. That was the validation that he was the, that he was the Messiah. Okay, if he's teaching something different, according to Deuteronomy chapter 13, he should be taken out and stoned. If Jesus taught something different than what is taught in the Torah, he should have been killed, rightly. Okay, so they, could, they found no fault in him because he taught the Torah. So Gino teaches unjust weights and measures, which is an abomination. And if we go back to the verses at the beginning of this right here, it is one of the things listed as not being in the kingdom because you commit abominable acts. You do abominations. Well, unjust weights and measures is one of those abominations. And God says it at least two times. Another problem with what Gino is teaching is that he is adding to and taking away from the commandments. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2, You shall not add to the word which I am commanding you, nor take away from it, that you may keep the commandments of Yahweh your Elohim, which I command you. In Deuteronomy 12, 32, Whatever I command you, you shall be careful to do. Do not add nor take away from it. But see, Gino adds and takes away. He adds a monogamy-only standard that's never taught in Scripture, and he takes away from it by saying that a man cannot have more than one woman when God very clearly demonstrates multiple places in his word that he gave or that he blessed. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 18, Leah says, God blessed me because I gave my maid to my husband, and he gave me a, uh, and uh, he, God, gave me a son. Okay, same thing with Rachel. She says, God vindicated me because I gave my maid Bilhah to my husband, and that is Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6 or so. Okay, so Gino is adding to and taking away from the word. There are parts that he's adding in there and other parts that he's taking out. He's teaching falsehood. Okay, and one more sin Gino commits, but the Spirit explicitly says from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, explicitly says that in latter times, some will fall away from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons by means of hypocrisy of liars seared in their own conscience as with a branding iron, men who forbid marriage and advocate abstaining from foods which God has created to be gratefully shared by those who believe and know the truth. And on down it says, sanctified by the word of God, so on and so forth. The point being that Gino forbids marriage, okay? He forbids people from remarrying after they have been divorced, even if the divorce was not their own fault. Gino teaches falsehood. What he's teaching is considered right here in Timothy as a doctrine of demons. He's adding to the word. He uses unequal weights and measures, and all of this ultimately undermines his real true. He wants to say that uh, that there's one God and that his, his standard is consistent, but then he starts talking about how the standards are changing or how things have changed. And so Gino is teaching falsehood. Okay, so let's go back all the way to the top. We're going to go back here to the book of Revelation right quick. Revelation right at the very beginning. Okay, blessed are those who wash their robes or who do the commandments so that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter by the city gates. Outside are the dogs and the sorcerers and the immoral persons and the murderers and the idolaters. Yeah, immoral people are outside, but David is inside. Isaac, Jacob, Abraham, Moses, Gideon, okay, they are inside the city. They are inside among those who recline at the table. Again, right here, 
nothing unclean and no one who practices abomination and lying shall enter into it. And yet Gino practices abomination by employing unequal weights and measures. He's the one who is adding to and taking away from the word. But we know that um, having more than one wife cannot be an abomination because Abraham and Jacob and Moses and David will be in the kingdom. Their names are written in the Lamb's book of life. So guys, what I want to tell you is you need to stop and think. Put your thinking cap on and use your noggin. Put the whole scripture together instead of picking and choosing, cherry picking verses as Jennings does. He's cherry picking verses to support a false doctrine. And in the process, he's binding men's conscience and he's binding people. And he is teaching a falsehood that is nowhere ever taught in scripture. I encourage you get into the word and stop listening to false teachers. For King and Kingdom, I bid you shalom.